thing I have to learn about chickens over and over again is just how different they are. Chickens are not mammals and they don't breed like mammals. So you should never hold a chicken upside down. A chicken on her back can suffocate. You can't do a Heimlich maneuver on a chicken. Panting chickens lay eggs with thin shells. Okay, I'll explain, but first check this out. Take a deep breath. What you just did was lower your diaphragm, which caused the air to flow into your body through your nose or mouth and down your trachea to your bronchi, and your lungs got much bigger. It feels good. Your lungs got filled with nice, fresh, oxygen-rich air, and your body began to transfer that oxygen from the air into your bloodstream. But by now, it's probably not feeling too good anymore. The air in your lungs is getting stale. You feel out of breath, but your lungs are full. You have to breathe that stale air back out of your lungs before you can get any more oxygen-rich air back in. Go ahead, breathe that stale air out and take some more breaths. What you just did was breathe the way mammals breathe. Diaphragm down, air in, lungs inflate, oxygen transfer occurs, and then reverse the process before taking the next breath. It's called bidirectional or tidal respiration, and it's very inefficient because almost as soon as your lungs fill with air, that air starts to get stale, and you have to wait to expel that stale air before you can breathe in fresh air. It's like living with roadworks instead of an open highway. The traffic, or the air, only gets to move in one direction at a time. But birds don't breathe like that. A mammal breathes like the waves coming in and going out, only intermittently flooding the lungs with oxygen. But birds breathe more like a river that flows smoothly and constantly. A chicken's lungs are never full of stale air, and they never have to wait while that air is expelled before taking the next breath in. They have a much more efficient system. The air always flows in one direction across their lungs. It's called unidirectional respiration, and all birds do it. If they didn't have such an efficient respiration system, there's no way that birds could fly for hours way up in the atmosphere where oxygen is so scarce. Pilots must use supplemental oxygen at 14,000 feet, but lots of birds can easily fly higher than that. So, uh, how does that work? Hmm, here's a diagram of a chicken. Just like us, air gets into a chicken's body through its nose or mouth, down her trachea and into her bronchi. Uh, yes, chickens have a nose, or at least nostrils. And a chicken has lungs, all right. And just like us, it's in the chicken's lungs that the oxygen from the air gets transferred into her bloodstream. But her lungs are pretty small compared to her overall body size, and they're quite rigid. Birds' lungs don't expand or contract much. And birds don't have a diaphragm either. Birds have to expand their rib cage and keel bone to make air flow into their body. But they don't need to move their ribs very much to get a lot of air into their body because their lungs are not the only place that air goes. Tucked away amongst a chicken's organs are nine air sacs. These air sacs are made of thin material a bit like plastic wrap and they fill a large proportion of her chest and abdomen. The air sacs are connected to her bronchi, her lungs and also to some of her bones. Air sacs are important for breathing and also help make a bird light enough to fly, a duck light enough to float, and help with thermoregulation, cooling the body temperature of a bird that's working its muscles hard. So when a chicken breathes in, most of the air doesn't go straight to her lungs. First of all, it fills the air sacs towards her back. When the air sacs are squeezed, 
This fresh air from her air sacs goes into her lungs and through thousands of tiny parabronchi where the oxygen is transferred into her bloodstream. When she inhales the next breath, the air from her lungs is drawn into her cranial air sacs at the front and when her air sacs are squeezed at the next exhalation, the stale air goes directly out through her trachea, not back into her lungs. So it takes two rounds of inhalation and exhalation for one lot of air to get into her air sacs, through her lungs and out of her body. But of course the next lot of air is already on its way through. With every inhalation air is drawn into her air sacs and with every exhalation air is pushed into her lungs. In this way, fresh air is always passing through her lungs in a continuous one-way flow. The thousands of parabronchi make for a very large surface area where oxygen transfer can occur. Plus, some oxygen transfer occurs in the blood circulation of the pneumatic bones as well. So, in this highly efficient way, a chicken can extract almost all of the oxygen from each breath of air that she takes and she takes about 30 breaths a minute. So all of this is fascinating and it reminds us just how different chickens are from some of the other animals that we might live with. And it explains some of those things that I mentioned at the beginning. It might look cute to cradle a chick laying on its back in your hand, but this is dangerous. Remember, chickens don't have a diaphragm and their air sacs are just flimsy sacs. In this position, her internal organs can fall against her air sacs and squash them empty of air, which severely restricts her breathing. This position is bad for baby chicks and even worse for adult chickens whose body weight is proportionally heavier. Besides which, a chicken in this position is terrified. The reason she's not moving is a thing called tonic immobility. She's scared stiff and playing dead in the hope that you'll let her escape. Don't do this to your baby chicks. They are not puppies or baby humans and their air sacs are getting squished. The same is true of holding a chicken by his legs. In this position, his internal organs fall up to his chest, no diaphragm, remember, and makes it hard for him to breathe. Holding birds like this also risks injuring their legs and maybe suffocating on regurgitated stomach contents. And it's definitely stressful. Some places have even specifically passed laws that make this illegal. So remember, keep your chickens the right way up. Those air sacs and the one-way airflow across her lungs also explain why you can't do a Heimlich manoeuvre on a chicken. If she gets a piece of food stuck in her throat, you are never going to be able to pop it out by compressing her chest or abdomen because her lungs are not expandable like ours. The only thing you can do is try to fish it out. And someone asked, can a chicken suffocate because of a broken bone? It's pretty rare, but theoretically possible that if a chicken breaks one of her pneumatic bones, she could not only have broken her bone, but also have ruptured her respiratory system. However, the air passages in her pneumatic bones are quite tiny compared to the size of her trachea, so it's unlikely that she would suffocate. But that thing about chickens that pant in hot weather laying eggs with thin shells, that's correct. Because chickens are so well insulated by their feathers, they rely on panting to cool off. The hotter they are, the more they pant. And the more they pant, the more carbon dioxide they breathe out. And you know what eggshells are made of? Calcium carbonate. If she pants out too much carbon dioxide, she could end up with not enough left to use in making strong shell for her egg. So if your chickens are laying eggs with thin shells in hot weather, it might just be because they're panting too much.
So all of this is fascinating and it reminds us just how different chickens are from some of the other animals that we might live with. And it explains some of those things that I mentioned at the beginning. So I hope you found it interesting to learn a little bit about the unusual way that chickens breathe. And just bear that in mind next time you're handling your chickens. They need to be able to get that air into their air sacs so that they can make the most use of the oxygen that's around them. Pretty clever, I reckon. <laughs> Bye for now. See you next time.